Good evening, all. Uh, I am Lakma Lisuru, the chairman of Building Service Engineering Sexual Committee. So, after wonderful video, is our first memory and the way of fraud. So, we are going to start our uh, webinar for the, uh, the session 2022 2023. So, it is very, very valuable and very time being topics about the project finance uh, and basic corporate finance skill uh, done by uh, to be presented by engineer uh, so i uh, on behalf of billion service section committee i welcome you sir uh, for delivering this uh, so your your presence and your uh, voluntary presence for delivering this webinar the uh, audience so then I, uh, um, so actually uh, talking about the building service uh, sectional committee. So we are mostly uh, working with uh, uh, engineers for the uh, field of building service engineers. So to promote and to give the better service, the, the, this, the webinar, the concept also one of the uh, task uh, normally we we are we have been doing these kind of webinars for the past years uh, uh, previously it was a previous public lecture now it's become as a webinar uh, with this uh, online platform so so we we, we 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 have been doing this engineering and engineering related engineering webinars uh, for the past year so so I warmly uh, welcome to all. Uh, then you, you will be having official uh, welcome from our team. So on behalf of uh, Building Service Section Committee as a chairman, I will uh, welcome. And so let's start to the webinar. I will invite our uh, co-task lead of this uh, webinar subcommittee. This over to you, uh, Kaushal. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Hope you guys can hear me. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Kaushal Patanar from Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee. Uh, I warmly welcome you to the sixth webinar organized by Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee uh, for the session 2022-23. Uh, today, webinar will be a very interesting one and a very different one. Uh, the topic is project finance and basic corporate financial skills. So, well, uh, we all know that the construction industry is very vital for uh, countries' economic development and physical development as well. So, due to the recent economic constraint, uh, high cost currency fluctuations, unfair competition by um, foreign companies, uh, skill drain, Sri Lankan construction industry is fa facing a huge challenges than never experienced before. Most of our engineers' jobs are at risk or already gone by now. So project finance is a very big challenge uh, these days. So is that a, it's a very sad story. So considering the Sri Lankan construction uh, downturn, I believe that uh, it is essential for all engineers uh, and project teams to educate on project finance and how these corporate entities uh, could fund our projects, how clients or other words owners deal with their corporate uh, funding and take financial de decisions to maximize their uh, company worth while keeping construction industry alive. That means keeping most of our engineers jobs safe. Well, let's, let's find out in a while. Today's objective of the webinar is to emphasize the importance of project finance and give a brief on corporate uh, financing. Thank you for, for you all for joining with us and let me introduce our uh, speaker today. Yeah. Engineer Pial Hennayaka is a well-known figure in the banking sector. He has graduated from the University of Moratua and started his uh, career as a civil engineer in CCB. 
uh, engineer PL has completed his MBA from Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand, and changed his career to finance uh, by joining Lanka Ventures PLC. It was a quite challenging decision for an engineer. So later, engineer PL uh, joined uh, with Hatton National Bank and worked there for more than 21 years. He retired the bank as uh, DGM Services and CEO Director of the real estate subsidiary. Afterward, engineer PL joined Ceylon Bank, P, uh, Ceylon Development PLC as an independent director, uh, then set up and headed the project finance division in Ceylon Bank as a deputy uh, general manager. He was the president of Association of Professional Bankers in Sri Lanka in 2024 and 2015. And uh, also he served as an advisor. Engineer Pial is a chartered engineer and graduate member of Sri Lanka Institute of Directors. Uh, he is the country coordinator to the uh, PFAN and he has shared his knowledge as a resource person for several professional forums as well. Uh, so without any further ado, please join me uh, in giving a warm welcome to our speaker tonight, engineer uh, Pial Hennaika. And uh, one more thing, I would like to remind you that there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So please uh, uh, send your question to the moderator and we will direct all your questions to the uh, speaker at the end of the presentation. So let's move on to the presentation. Uh, it's over to you, Engineer Pial. Thank you. Okay, thanks Kaushal for that generous introduction. And uh, Kaushal was my student in the CPD course, Finance for Engineers, we completed recently. And he invited me to make a presentation on project finance. Uh, so I accepted his invitation. And I would like to thank Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee, his chairman, and the EXCO members, including Kaushal, for inviting me to make this presentation. Hope you can see my presentation and can hear me clearly. <clears throat> yes, you can hear the presentation is visible. Okay. So project finance, when I, I joined HNB in 2000, uh, 1995 to start the project finance division of HNB. And I worked in the project finance division for nine years uh, and uh, then had to take other duties in the bank. And then when I retired, Ceylon Bank wanted me to come and join them to set up their project finance division. So I have <clears throat> nine years HNB, three years Ceylon Bank, and then venture capital about three years, so about 15 years of project finance experience. These days I am doing a certificate course for bankers at Institute of Bankers, Sri Lanka. It is a 48 hour course. So you can see within one and a half hours, I will not be able to cover much project finance and some aspects of corporate finance, but I will give you some <clears throat> idea of what project finance and corporate finance is. When I joined uh, CECB after graduation in 1983, uh, my first project was Randhanigala project. So hydropower is very close to me because when in the bank, 1997, the World Bank credit lines, energy services delivery project and renewable energy for rural economic development came. And we bankers together help the Sri Lankan small hydropower industry to develop. And the pictures here on the left-hand corner is Victoria Dam and the upper Kotmale on the right hand, where the project director was Savinarath Fanandu, past president of IESL, who closely worked with me at AIT Alumni Association. Both of us are patrons. <clears throat> and then Broadlands, 
I think the last large hydropower project. And when I was working in Canyon, used to pass this Ketulgal area, which all, even those days they were speaking of broadlands. <clears throat> then the last one is on the bottom right, mini hydropower plant, this is synergy. Because now project finance, before going to project finance, we should know what are the projects, right? These are some of the projects. Then these are some successful projects done by Sri Lankan government. <clears throat> Lotus Tower, Mattala Airport, and Hambantara Seaport. Are they successful? I don't think so. And they, are, they have not done any <clears throat> evaluation to see whether there are any returns to cover the investment. So in project finance, what we are doing is we want to see whether our investment brings us results, brings us cash flows to cover our investment. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> these projects, government projects, is waste of resources of the country. Our, we have got indebted to Chinese uh, government and some agencies by doing these projects, and we are never able to recover these investments. <clears throat> So those uh, resources could have been used for better purpose for the development of the country. These are some private sector projects. First one is, I think, Kaushal Works, their Kalambu city center. Then on the, uh, it's developed by Abans Group and contractor was Sunken. The, on the right-hand side, Shangri-La, and the bottom, Port City. Port City, there were some developments today, and I will discuss it later. The Shangri-La and Port City are <clears throat> foreign direct investments, while the Kalambu City Center is a local group developing a project. Now, these are <clears throat> logos of companies. Are they projects? No, they are not projects. They are companies. They are having operations. But these companies have come to this stage by doing projects. Now, it constraints, you can remember some time back, uh, they started Kandalama, so much of uh, resistance, however they went ahead. And that is a project they did. You know, Haley's. Uh, also have problems with some of their projects in recent times. And <clears throat> MAs have done so many garment factories in the country. And HNB, where I worked, we did, we constructed uh, HNB towers, uh, masterpiece in Colombo City. And at that time, there was a lot of resistance. Why bank uh, spending so much? And central bank was uh, putting some conditions also on the bank. We had a uh, tough time, but now we have an <clears throat> iconic tower. And uh, we were the first bank under my leadership uh, who did three green buildings for the bank, green branches. First one was Nittamu branch, which is a uh, lead certified green building. Uh, then Jaffna, also lead certified. Jaffna was a new New building, both uh, Nitambu and Jaffna. And then we did uh, Kantale, you know, not Kantale, Kalmune. Uh, it's a Sri Lanka Green Building Council approved green building in Kantale. I don't think any bank I would have done after that any green buildings. <clears throat> right. So we go to now, you know, what are the projects? Now, these are not projects, these are. Uh, companies which have come up with the assets doing projects. <clears throat> so what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to accomplish a product or service. This is the project management book guide. PM book guide, 
So what are the attributes of projects? <clears throat> there is a unique purpose. Now you can construct a high rise building. It can be a commercial building, a residential condominium, <clears throat> five star hotel, shopping mall, or combination like waterfront of John Keel's holdings. Right? So it's a unique. Now there's no other projects like waterfront. There's no other project like uh, Kalamu City Center. So this is unique purpose. And uh, Kalamu City Center also has shopping mall, the apartments, and a hotel. Right? But it is smaller size compared to the waterfront. It is a temporary organization. From idea stage to project completion, only the project will be there. After the project will get into operations, then the project is closed. Then the resources, manpower, equipment, machinery, material, so a lot of resources go into a project. Now, when you take a waterfront project, the sponsor was John Keyes Holdings Group, then Kalambu City Center, Abans Group. Like that, you need to have a sponsor, primary sponsor or a customer. It is now waterfront project was to be completed, I, I think, a few years back. Still, it is not fully completed. So, because there is uncertainty, they would have faced the COVID and all the other problems the country was associated with. And there were some construction problems as well, I understand. So, because of that, the projects have a lot of uncertainty. After the project is completed also, whether they will have a market. Now there is so much of commercial space available. Havelock City is their office space here, uh, close to my residence. And then uh, Waterfront also will be having commercial space. So are there companies now, Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lankan economy is doing bad. Sri Lankan companies also should be doing bad. So whether they will take these spaces at a high rental is a question. So there are so much of uncertainty when we do a project. During the project implementation, as well as after the project is completed, when we want cash flows to come in to recover our investment. Now, some other project definitions here. If you take a hotel project, a project is one time set of activities with a start and end. So if it's a hotel project, it will start one date, maybe three years later, it will be completed with a defined set of desired results. In a hotel project, what are the defined set of desired results? Number of rooms or keys, right? uh, swimming pools, how many swimming pools, then how many restaurants, other uh, health facilities, right? Those are the desired results. Then the second definition, one shot, time limited, goal directed, major undertaking, requiring the commitment of varied skills and resources. Right? One shot, time limited and goal directed is covered in the first uh, definition as well. Major undertaking, project is, we can also do small, small projects. Now our construction of our own house, it's a project, right? But in project finance, we don't, the banks don't do project finance of houses, they give housing loans, right? But for major undertakings, uh, requiring the commitment of varied skills and resources, so many engineers, so many, uh, so many <clears throat> contractors, right? So many parties, maybe it's a hotel project, hotel consultant, architect, right? quantity surveys, so, so many varied skills, the, uh, the carpenters, masons, skilled people, unskilled people. So there's, there's a commitment of varied skills and resources. Then the last one, the combination of human and non-human resources pulled together in a temporary organization to achieve a specific purpose. As mentioned earlier, if you have to come consider human, human and non-human resources, they are putting together in a temporary organization to achieve a specific purpose. 
I used to ask whether you have a question, but in this webinar, you can't do it because you will have to answer, ask questions after the end of the webinar. Right. Now, how projects are conceived? Now, they are normally, the projects doesn't, don't just come up, right? It is a good business idea, right? Technically feasible. Can we have a nuclear power plant? There is some discussion these days in Sri Lanka about a, a child, the Russian, uh, Russian uh, government has agreed to do a nuclear power plant in Sri Lanka. Uh, so is, is it technically feasible? Right? So it should be good, good business idea. It should be technically feasible. Now this is uh, the power plant to be 2000 megawatt nuclear plant. And we need base load. Why? The last government cancelled a Sampur uh, coal power project, uh, which was almost ready to start with uh, joint venture with India. Then the, uh, I think, third phase of uh, Norocholi also cancelled. And we, we are having a problem with the base load. And I don't think in future we will be able to get ADB has stopped uh, assisting financing uh, coal power projects because they are going green. Right? So we need a base station, the nuclear power station will be good, but it will cost right? USD around 8 billion. That is assuming 4,000 USD per kilowatt. So is it economically viable? And in our country scenario, can we raise funds? Then politically suitable, construction of a coal power plant or thermal power plant may not be politically suitable in future. We lost the opportunity to construct Sampur and Norachuri. Uh, now we may not get that opportunity in future. So we have to look, at, look for other options. Is it socially acceptable? You may remember a few years back, uh, uh, government wanted to allow casinos open and Australian casino, uh, uh, casino uh, operator wanted to come here and set up, I think that opposite uh, Lake House uh, car park. But there was so much of uh, Ob objection, protest to this and the casinos. But I think now it might come again. The people are not much worried about casinos now. People are worried about how to make their uh, living in this difficult scenario. Because in the uh, waterfront, there is a provision for a casino. And uh, I, hear, I heard that they are going to lease it to a casino operator. <clears throat> this is again summary of what is a project. Now we know a fixed set of objectives, lifespan, it is start from one date, it will end. Then there's teamwork, uh, there's a life cycle I will discuss in the next slides. Uniqueness, if even we consider two houses of same design, in two adjoining plots, they, there will be some differences, maybe foundation or something else, right? So every project is unique. And the project while being done, I think most of you are involved in projects, you know it change, you can't have fixed project, yeah, you have to uh, face changes. And as I mentioned earlier, there is risk because on, after we complete, we don't know whether we have that market right? and whether we will be able to complete also we might know, no, not know because of the uh, increase in project cost, increase in interest rates. So there's a lot of uncertainty in doing projects. <clears throat> so project starts with conception phase. This is, you get an idea and how to clearly define it 
after a pre-feasibility study. Now you have an idea, but like Navaloka Mudalali would have had so many ideas even starting the Navaloka Hospital, but he would have got someone to develop that idea, right? to define that idea. Then planning and organizing. You have to plan and organizing. Maybe you do the business plan, how you are going to go ahead with the project. I am not going to go through with all this. I can share these slides. So I explain what is the project. So what is project finance? Project finance is used to describe financing of any major capital investment project, right? any major capital investment project by whatever external funding sources and through whatever risk assumption pattern. Right? So you sometimes you take higher risk for some projects. Sometimes you take lower risk. Now I can say higher risk were taken by initial developers of uh, uh, small hydropower projects, mini hydropower projects. And lower risk are maybe construction of condominium is a lower risk because when the market is good, you sometimes they don't put any money and they get uh, bank loan and the advances from the buyers and complete the project. The structuring of a cohesive capital investment financing package from a variety of funding sources. So structuring of a cohesive capital investment. Capital investment is investing in assets investment financing package. So variety of funding sources, not only one source, you have to go for variety of funding sources. And these parties willing to bear risk, right? these funding sources who are willing to bear risk. And it is vital to successful development of project. So it will involve raising equity. Equity is share capital and preference shares. That is also part of the share capital, but they get a uh, fixed uh, dividend as well as debt as well as loans. The participants in the capital structure normally will include those with a commercial interest in the project, such as project sponsor who got the idea, the concept, suppliers and purchases of the project output. Now, if you take, for example, Apollo Hospital project, that was funded by us uh, in uh, maybe late 1990s. And uh, Apollo Group came to Sri Lanka and they were given land uh, on Park Road, Helvetical Mouth area. And uh, then Indian Apollo was there. And there was a local joint venture partner who took equity in the project. Yeah. We, there were three banks financing. And I think there were venture capital companies as well. And International Finance Corporation, IFC, they gave a guarantee for banks to uh, lend for that project. <clears throat> so there are external sources of project finance. We mentioned in the previous slide, whatever external sources of project finance. There are these commercial banks, development finance institutions. Those days we had NDB and DFCC. Those were development banks. And they were even taking equity. They were taking shareholding of some companies. Like uh, when we develop, when we gave loans for GTB Steel, Indian investment, uh, we HNB and DFCC gave uh, loans. And HN, uh, DFCC had a shareholding, even Merchant Bank of Ceylon had a sh shareholding. And uh, those days, they appoint directors from DFCC and NDB for, for their investments. Now both are not no more there. So that is a big drawback for the country because they both of them were converted to commercial banks. Then there are export credit agencies. Now we we have to we have taken loans. The Sri Lankan government 
and some state organizations from Chinese Exim Bank to do projects. Right now, these uh, loans have to be rescheduled. Right? So, export credit agencies, when when their country contractors uh, invest in uh, other countries, they support by giving loans to the uh, country which is taking those equipment or the projects. Then the multilateral institutions, ADB, World Bank, IFC, and IDA. IDA is part of the World Bank. When we, this re, re, uh, renewable energy project finance in 1997 to about 2005, IDA was giving those two credit lines and which developed the renewable energy industry, especially the uh, mini hydro, the small hydro industry in Sri Lanka. And those hydropower developers, after developing in Sri Lanka, they have gone into other countries like East Africa and I think even uh, Bangladesh. <clears throat> then the lessos, you can get lease facilities, for bigger uh, lease of equipment for a project. And the private and public debt markets. That is, you can go to the stock market and list your company, but initially when you start a project, very difficult because yeah, there's nothing uh, on the ground, but there are, Maybe you now remember wind power. Wind power came public, right? Uh, about two, three years back. And they said they are raising capital to do projects. They mentioned the projects and how much they are going to invest in those projects. Now we have to check whether they have done that. Right? So the here public and private debt markets, right? Like you can get uh, debentures, right? There are now I see there is again the debenture thing coming up because the interest rates are coming down. The company is issuing debentures. Then the company, that party can directly go to the people who are having money rather than going through banks. Why, why the banks are there to get savings from uh, people who are, want to save and give loans to people who want to borrow. Right? So these people who are saving cannot give directly to the, the borrowers because the amounts are different. So the banks is an intermediary. They take deposits and lend it to. And there is sometimes mismatch, mismatch, mismatch of, the, uh, of the periods. Like normally deposits are short term. When you do project finance, we have to go for eight years, 10 years. So we don't have the banks don't have eight year, 10 year deposits, but uh, the banks have been doing project finance with their own funds as well. Then the venture capital. Venture capital companies, Lanka Ventures, where I started my finance uh, career, uh, uh, floated another company, LVL, LVL uh, Energy. I think, and both are listed companies. And last year, they were doing really bad because of the problems in the industry and didn't get any, didn't pay any dividends as well. So there were several venture capital companies who were incorporated in 1992 because the government gave some incentives, like uh, their investment can be uh, written off over a period without then we have taxes, there is tax holiday also given. So, but then venture capital, come, venture capital didn't uh, fit into Sri Lankan situation for Sri Lankans uh, who are, cannot get loans from banks only come to venture capital most of the time. So there were problems. supplier credit. Suppliers sometimes give you credit and then that can be part of the financing package. Another definition of project finance. Here, normally this definition says financing of infrastructure projects. But in Sri Lanka, we are not only in project finance infrastructure projects, 
we have been financing hotels, uh, manufacturing organizations, manufacturing factories, right? all these areas which are which which come without with the idea and have to be developed and then the loan has to be paid from the cash flows right so in this definition uh, power generation telecommunications transportation is project finance so in the world large project financing happening in these areas So what is the nature and importance of project finance? Project finance is long-term, right? It's rather than short-term. Now, normally when you banks give short-term loans, but project finance is long-term. And it is a large investment rather than small investment, it's nature. And Project finance is more complicated due to concerns of future cash flows. Now, project loan has to be paid after the project is completed. We take hotel, we complete the hotel, and then hotel opens and tourists, uh, guests come and uh, other events, they get income. From that income only, they have to pay the loan. So it is complicated due to that. Uh, and time value of money because Future cash is not as the present cash, right? So that's why we have evaluation criteria to bring it to the same uh, same position, present level. Then the importance of project finance, large amount of resources are often involved. Right? So if you don't uh, plan the projects properly, if we don't have a good idea, you have a business, Right? It, and uh, if uh, the, it is profitable, whether it can survive, then we will waste the resources of the country. And after you start the project, difficult to bail out once the investment is made. Okay. I have a case. Uh, we we finance a hydropower project. 98 or 99 uh, and there were four banks in all and two venture capital companies and this was started by two batchmates coming from two business families right? and project there is a project cost then there was a project cost overrun the banks give additional loan right? then the there was another project cost overrun and uh, DFCC Bank, who was close to one of the developers, said, no, we'll give this loan also. So we gave additional second loan together. Then what happened was the project was completed. This was in Rattapura. Uh, they filled the four-bay tank, and the four-bay tank collapsed due to the uh, construction defects or structural or design defects of one of the partners who was doing the construction. Then what can we do? We can't stop. My deputy general manager at that time said, Pial, you can't finance anymore this project. But we had a meeting with the CEO of uh, NDB. NDB was leading the syndication, Mr. Ranjit Fernando, and he was a great banker. We decided that we'll go ahead an additional loan. And I came and told our managing director, if we don't do that, we will lose all of what we have given. And project was completed, still running. And uh, so that was, you can't, you may have to, if you have to uh, stop giving that loan and that project would have collapsed. And I think the industry, even the hydropower, small hydropower industry would have collapsed. Creation of productive assets. Now, when we invest in these project finance facilities given to creation of productive assets, and what is needed by the country is export-oriented projects where we can earn uh, foreign exchange. So that those type of projects, if it is coming, 
the banks will finance, but banks have not been financing last year because of problems I will discuss later. And uh, so that is the situation. That is why project finance is very important for the country, for uh, us to have productive assets and employment as well. So the characteristics of project financing, it was mentioned in the flyer as well, non-recourse or limited recourse. Now, non-recourse or limited recourse is you do a project. I'll take again a hotel project. Now, you will take the hotel project land, hotel project building and all the assets as security. Right. That means now they are this advanced group had done this Kalambu city center. If if this project failed, the lenders cannot go and ask Abans group, no, this is not enough. What when we sell this, you give us from your other savings, right? Non-recourse means you can only take what you have been the project you have financed, so that is non-recourse. Limited recourse means you may ask for some other uh, security, like uh, you now when in Maldives, when you are financing a project, uh, they said not only the project island, they will give cash flows from their existing another resort. As so, that was a additional uh, additional income to pay the. But that is not a, the correct example. But limited recourse is you can ask for some other property as well as security. Now, recently I went through uh, a bank uh, evaluation of a project, and they have taken the project asset, then another building of the the promoters of the project, then uh, uh, salaries of the uh, directors, which is coming from a, a Middle East company where they have invested, then their personal guarantees. So it is not non recourse or limited recourse, that's full recourse. Okay, so they are getting everything from the directors and the investors. And the payback of the project loan is through project cash flows. Now, I'm still I am taking this hotel project. Hotel is completed, hotel is running, and they get the income. So from that cash flow, after paying off your expenses, you have to pay the bank's loans. Now, one hotel project in Kalambu City, they they took a dollar loan, saying that they they think in their that was their first hotel project, thinking that they will get dollar income to pay the dollar loan. But they didn't realize, and even the banks haven't realized, that the travel agents take the dollars and pay the hotel only in rupees. Right? So they had to buy dollars in the black market to pay the banks. Then secured against project assets and project documents. Right? Project assets, the, all the project assets and project documents is very important. Because there will be, now if it is a power project, there will be power purchase agreement, energy permit. Right? Those documents have to be secured. Or what the banks do now is you take the shares, mortgage the shares, or take a lien over shares. So if the project company has problems, you take over the project company because all the Approvals are in the name of project company. If you take only the machinery and uh, things, can't do anything. So you take over the company and sell it to another party. And it is a special purpose entity. We call it special purpose vehicle also. That is, now the investors only invest their equity. It's a, in a special purpose. You uh, incorporate a company for the project. That's a special purpose vehicle. Normally greenfield. That is new, all are new projects, new venture. That's, that's why Greenfield. <clears throat> so,
So project finance loans, we discussed earlier as well, long-term financing of infrastructure and industrial projects based upon the projected cash flows. Right? The people give, have to prepare projected cash flows. Those are, you have to use your uh, experience, your the, the data, and you have to project cash flows of the project rather than the balance sheet of the project sponsors. Project sponsor, I was telling Abans Group, you can't look at the Abans Group balance sheet and finance Colombo City Center. You have to look at Colombo City Center uh, future projected earnings before it was completed when, when they came for financing and finance the project. The loans are secured by the project assets and paid entirely from project cash flow. Right? So the loans will be as security, you take project assets and will be paid entirely from the project cash flow, project equity and debt, rather than the general assets or assets or net worth of the project sponsors. Project lenders are given a lien over the shares. I mentioned earlier, the, you take the shares because you need this, the project company, because they have most of the approvals in the name of the company and are able to assume control of project company if the project, project company has difficulties complying with the loan terms. <clears throat> So there are several parties involved in a project. The sponsor or the promoter and provider of equity. Sponsor of the project is the promoter of the project and provider of equity. He might get others also to provide equity. SPV, special purpose vehicle, that is who owns the project, right? Not the, the promoter or sponsor does not own. The special purpose vehicle owns the project and it is the developer of the project. The financial institutions, they give senior and junior debt. Like senior means uh, when there is a bankruptcy and you have to recover the, what's given, senior lenders will get first and junior lenders will get later. And the equity holders will get the last. Off taken, that is mainly in the uh, <clears throat> infrastructure projects, of taker is the purchase of the output. We, when we were financing hydropower project, uh, we didn't take CEB risk because we thought CEB will not default at any time. We all thought CEB gets a cash flow because CEB is selling electricity, but CEB had a bad period because the tariff was not increased from 2013 and making losses. So CEB stopped paying in uh, October, 21, right? So that risk is there now. And very difficult to get investors to invest when you have an off take because only one, one uh, uh, person, one who is purchasing the output. You do, if you have several, then you can share the risk. But here, there is this risk of getting uh, investors or banks to give loans or uh, electricity generation projects. Supplier, who is a provider of raw material to run the project. Like if you take a diesel power plant, the uh, petroleum corporation or the coal power plant, I think there is this uh, company uh, started for coal uh, imports. Those will be the suppliers. Government authorities approves of construction environmental standards and even they might give property also and even you have to get all the approvals which is a big problem for most of the developers. In the EPC contract, there can be different ways. EPC is engineering procurement uh, contractor uh, design and engineering equipment provider and contractor. And that is, you give to them, and this called uh, turnkey projects. That is, if you give to them, and you have to only take the, if you are the developer, uh, the key at the end of the thing and start the operations. So that type of contractors also 
here. Then the ONM operator. After the project is completed, you have to hand over to ONM operator, provides the operations and maintenance services. <clears throat> I think uh, the building services engineering is, I think, in, into ONM operations as well, uh, to my knowledge. <clears throat> Right. Now, there are two, there are loans for corporates in the banks, right? I'm now looking, uh, speaking to from bank side of financing. So corp, those are called corporate credit. And to projects, we give project finance. So what is the difference between corporate credit and project finance? <clears throat> now, if you take corporate credit, Bank, banking service offered to corporate clients, right? And project finance offered to new projects. And corporate businesses are fully established, but in project finance is only the business idea and the project proposal. And corporate is based on past performance. They have been operating for years and we have the annual report, the past finances, even monthly accounts. but Project finance based on future cash flows. Corporate, we give short-term funding. Projects, we give long-term loans. Corporate is low risk and project finance, medium to high risk. There are audited finance statements in corporates, but in project finance, we have a projected or we call pro forma finances incorporate management and system in place, but in project finance, the project management will commence after the project loan is given. And when the financing is uh, closed, financing is ready. Now, if you take John Keel's Holdings Waterfront, I hope I was not there in the bank when they were giving the loans for that project. Right? I hope they went for project finance loan. And at the beginning, all the banks would have been be behind John Keyes to give loans to the project because John Keyes is a established. So maybe they took loans through corporate credit and invested in the project, or they went for project finance loan. And large, uh, large corporates, they may not take project finance loans. They can borrow from their existing uh, credit lines and then give it to uh, the project company, it can be also done. Right. I think this is an interesting area where I'm going to discuss the status of project finance in Sri Lanka. Let me take some water before I do that. Now, what has happened to government projects in Sri Lanka? Now, Sri Lankan government uh, was their international credit rating was coming down from 2020. Then the then former governor was accusing the rating companies rather than trying to correct what was wrong with our uh, economy. So he was only criticizing them, and but never took action to correct the situation. Now, after default, last year we, uh, I think March or April, we defaulted on our loans, the first time in this country's history. And Fitch has rated as, Fitch is a rating agency, international rating agency, RD. Right? That was done on May 14th, 2022. RD is restricted default. Then SNP, there is a Standard and Poor, uh, another rating company. They, they said SD, their rating is SD. Right? Uh, selectively defaulted because we were paying the World Bank, ADB, and them, but we defaulted on the uh, international sovereign bonds. Right? How did we 
come up to that level was in the past uh, we we had a good rating maybe about b now rating starts from triple a uh, double a plus a like that it comes down right so we were about b or b plus and then we we issue uh, international sovereign bonds and then settle the previous loans we have taken right when this default happened and before that also our rating was coming down when we got this rd restricted default and selectively default sd from fitch and snp you can't go to the market and borrow money because no one will give you and if someone gives we have to pay a high premium if the normal loans are around 3% then you have to pay maybe 8% premium right so because of that our default what happened the country to country loans also stopped like the japanese government loan for the airport was stopped because the they until we have to reschedule these loans and start repayment so because of that i think the, the airport extension project was stopped i now i see uh, i understand uh, airport aviation is has started the project with their own money <clears throat> so we have to wait for government to get funding other than some funding for relief to poor like world bank there is no loans coming and uh, imf loan is coming to correct our uh, the uh, economic uh, the the financial situation financial system right other than that we will have to wait maybe a few months or a year until we have you now august september the government is saying that they will agree with international lenders to uh, hair cut that is if they we have 100 uh, million loan that may might come down to 70 million because without cutting the loans we cannot have uh, sustainable re repayment program because the loans are too much even the local loans are too much about 83 billion us dollars our total loan quantum right so we have to wait till they do this restructuring and start repayment and then only our rating will go up after the rating goes up uh, before the rating goes up sometimes maybe the government to government loans might come the country cannot raise any international financing until the ratings go up then the private sector what happened to the private sector last year interest rates increased rapidly it went over even 30% right? some projects obtain loans at flow linked to floating interest rate it's called floating interest rates and linked to awplr awplr average weighted prime lending rate now this average weighted prime lending rate was less than 10% at in 2022 beginning right and it went over 30% uh, maybe mid or later uh, mid 2022 and the companies the projects which have taken uh, loans at awplr plus 0 or plus 0.5 they have to pay 30% there is a power project which had this problem because they took from three banks for their power projects at awplr plus 0.5% and uh, the rate went up to 30 over 30% right 332 then cb defaulting already and they were having problems they asked me also because as the country coordinator for pfen we are trying to help renewable energy projects uh, to do their uh, project plans the business plan financial model and get approvals and find investors but i was appointed last year february starting for the year from january and after my appointment all these things happen 
how can you do projects in Sri Lanka? You can't get your local banks to give loans and no one will come to, uh, any international investor will come and invest in Sri Lankan projects. So we are having big problem for renewable energy development in Sri Lanka with uh, Sustainable Energy Authority, Mr. Vikram Singh, Harsha Vikram Singh, we are trying to do some uh, program for people who have taken the approvals for projects, how we can help them to do their projects. <clears throat> so the private sector uh, will might start getting loans from banks because of the interest rates are coming down. So if then the interest rates come down, then they might get loans. But that risk I mentioned earlier for power projects, CEB risk is very high. And CEB has also mentioned even the uh, this renewal of tariffs uh, from July, that they are still having problems of the previous, uh, previous uh, debtors. Right? Because they have to pay and they have so much, and they are, I think they were asking the PUCSL to consider that as well, the general manager of CEB. <clears throat> so, private sector might start projects hope so that there will be employment for engineers. For indirect investment, uh, Sri Lanka does not attract for indirect investment, FDIs compared to some Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam. Reason, we don't have a good investment friendly climate. Now investment friendly climate used to be measured by ease of doing business index. Right? There are 190 countries and the last they have done in 2019, I think there is a problem uh, in the World Bank. They say it because it is biased. For some countries, they have stopped it. I think now we were uh, hundred, according to my research, in two thousand nineteen, right? and the Vietnam was sixty nine. So in this uh, ease of doing business index, one is the best, right? One ninety, one nine, one is one uh, number one has a regulatory environment that is conducive to business operations. Number hundred ninety the least friendly to the business environment, business operations. Okay. So they are looking at several factors. Start a business. Now in Sri Lanka, I think that is better. You can incorporate company even online. I think that has been developed. Uh, registering property. That is a problem in Sri Lanka. It's uh, re registration of property. Property business is a then getting electricity, yeah. there are European companies who are shifting from Europe to East Asian countries because the electricity prices are high in Europe. What East Asian countries do is even the, the subsidizing the, the power companies to attract investors. Now, Sri Lanka also did that until recently, uh, but now our rates are very high. Maybe some companies, we are told, leave in Sri Lanka and setting up in other countries. Then the trading across borders, then you need to have, I think we have that the ports are okay, but there can be other problems. Construction permits, getting credit, getting credit means getting loans, right? Uh, protecting minority interest. That problems are there. I think there were some foreign investors who were complaining about some of their uh, companions, Sri Lankan counterparts, uh, taking them for a ride. And paying taxes, we are very lowly ranked. And enforcing contracts, also we are very lowly ranked. So even if FDI increase, we do not know how much benefit to local construction industry. Now, and you were mentioning in the, at the beginning also in the introduction, the uh, foreign contractors are not giving uh, work to local contractors, there's not no benefit coming to local construction industry. And uh, 
FDA is coming to Sri Lanka, how much uh, will local construction industry benefit? But there is good news uh, today. Uh, the, there was a gazette has been uh, issued on 7th of July, Colombo Port City Investment Incentives. So it is expected foreign direct investment will come because of these incentives, 50% tax rate or enhanced capital allowance, either of that. If you take 50% tax rate, you can't take enhanced capital allowance. Capital allowance means how much you invest and 30% of investment, I think three times that of investment is depreci depreciated uh, assets. Uh, then the, they have listed businesses of strategic importance. Uh, these are international trade, shipping, logistics, offshore banking, some of them, and expecting dollars 5.6 billion FDI in five year period and creating 140,000 direct job opportunities. Right? To start a project, to get these, these uh, incentives, you have to invest $100 million per plot of land in the port city. So this is very good news. If this is successful, and we, most of you will have, the engineers will have jobs. Right. Now we go to the project evaluation and selection. I won't go through everything because uh, I can share these slides and we have now taken more than one hour. Uh, now, first project promoter, identify, identify a project and evaluate it and decide to invest in the project. And after they decide to invest, they will approach other sources and banks for investment of equity and debt or combination of both. First, project sponsor has to decide whether the project is viable and then only he comes to the other institutions. So when existing company want to select a project, they should evaluate the project based on the degree to which they meet the company's objectives. So the what we mean by project evaluation and selection is the process of evaluating individual projects or group of projects, and then choosing to implement some set of them so that the objectives of the promote organization will be achieved. Now, there are four uh, numeric, non-numeric models used for selections. Normally, we use numeric models, right? But there are four non-numeric models. The sacred cow means the boss wants to do the project. So if the boss wants to do the project, no one can object. So the, it is called sacred cow. Operating necessity. Now you say your factory gets, uh, there's a fire in your factory and factory get uh, is completely gutted. Right? What can you do? You have to open, you have to construct a new factory. So it is an operating necessity. Uh, competitive necessity is uh, that because the competitors are doing, you will have to do it. Now, one example I'm taking is the early 90s, the ATMs, only HSBC had an ATM in Fort and Sampath Bank started ATMs, getting ATMs open in branches and right, other banks, if they didn't do it, they, they will lose the market. So everyone started uh, having their own ATMs. And we are having too many ATMs now because each bank in each branch has ATMs and they are off-site ATMs as well. Now, when the central banks uh, approves ATMs, they will uh, check what are the number of ATMs in the in the city and they approve them. Lanka Clear also has ATM network and small banks no need to invest in ATMs and you can join Lanka Clear. 
right? Because ATM is very costly. I used to be to procure ATMs for the bank. I know even that time it is costly exercise. Then, then even the digital banking. Now, if one bank started digital banking, other banks have to follow digital banking because uh, then if you don't have the digital banking, then your customer base will shift, right? So that is competitive necessity. Competitive benefit or competitive advantage is now produce goods and services at a lower cost. Now remember our garment industry, Sri Lanka, we, why we started garment industry? It shifted from maybe Europe and USA to countries where the labor cost is low. Right? So the, there's a comparative benefit. Then the call centers, financial services of developed countries are in uh, developing countries because of the comparative benefit of low cost uh, labor. Now, if an existing company wants to select a project, the example is I took is a cement plant, cement in old factory. The plant is really old. The company wants it replaced with a new plant. Right? So the new production process will mean higher efficiency, higher volume, better profits, better working conditions, and meeting environmental standards. So the company will have to weigh among several factors, production factors. Now, this is all new machinery, whether the laborers, the, the skilled people in the existing factory can they handle this machinery, right? And whether you have enough power supply and other raw materials might change whether they can uh, be used in the production. Marketing factors. Now we have a New factory may be higher capacity. So earlier you were doing uh, 10 tons, now you are doing 50 tons. Is there a market for this? So how are you going to approach? The financial factors, the project cost, and how are you going to finance the project? And then the personal factors. Now maybe you had the factory in Horana, now we have shifted, we have to do in the new factory in Katunai. So people who are from Horona, now we have to travel to Katunai. There are some personal factors we have to take into account and the administrative and miscellaneous factors. Right. So here I am going to explain you what a bank look at when they appraise a project to finance, before finance. So the bank <clears throat> is doing it to find out whether the project is acceptable, eligible to be financed. Because the project has been uh, accepted by the developer, he has decided to invest and he's coming to the bank and the bank is checking whether it's acceptable, eligible, eligible to be financed by the bank. And bank will do a comprehensive and systematic review of all aspects of a project. And, and this is a second look. The, the developer has already done the evaluation and decided that the project is viable. So the bank is doing a, taking a second look at the project or the project report. And, and the, the banker who is doing that is no way involved in his preparation. And the financial institution takes a completely independent view of the project. And the bank will highlight weak areas in the project. Right now, I remember when a hydropower project, small hydropower, mini hydropower project came in 97 or 98 to us. And that developer was not a big company, but they were, the, they were brothers who were very committed. And they gave me the project report, my, myself and the DFCC bank. I said, I want to get it checked the hydrology study by another engineer. First they objected, they didn't like it, but they agreed and I got CCB uh, also involved and CCB appointed an engineer and we checked. And later this uh, 
CCB engineer was used by this company in their few in their projects in the future as well in later as well right so we have to be very uh, insist now even the thermal power projects done by eight spins i wanted a uh, consultant appointed uh, we were several banks were involved uh, and we got dr tilak semla with my batchmate as the consultant and he gave us the report whether the project is because we don't have in the bank the technical know how to evaluate it right so the project uh, the bank is doing an exercise in future based on certain assumptions so the bank who is doing it should understand the environment in the project sustain itself that's why i started this project finance course for bankers at institute of bankers because a lot of bankers they don't know how to do project finance evaluation so i thought i can contribute to the industry by starting this project finance course it's a joint exercise by promoters now the bank has to get some information to evaluate so if the promoter the project developer doesn't give information then the bank cannot evaluate and it might take months to uh, evaluate and approve the project the banks will consider a project favorable the promoters should inspire confidence we have to uh, when we look at the promoter we should be happy that now i remember a project we did that was a mistake we made uh, moratua company came to use the saw dust and to make mdf boots right? the promoter was re highly recommended by our moratua manager and but we had some concerns but because it was highly recommended by the manager we went on but later we found he has defaulted commercial bank as well and he was telling that there is a problem with commercial bank he has uh, filed a case with the file against the commercial bank right? so the promoter is very important if we if we don't have any confidence in him then we should not go ahead the bank should not go ahead the technology to be adopted is well proven the banks cannot finance new technology now this mdf board also new technology because i came from venture capital i thought we should finance but the banks should keep away from new technology because banks cannot take that risk there's venture capital companies who should take risk that is and it should be proven technology and the product should have a market potential and the project cost should not be unreasonably high now sometimes uh, what these developers do is they increase the project cost and come and we say 100 million project cost they say uh, 40% equity 60% debt that is 40 million equity 60 million debt actually project cost may be 70 million so how much is putting only 10 million or sometimes he may not put anything the total project is financed by the bank right so the bank has to check the whether the project cost is uh, correct uh, and the promoter's contribution is not unduly low promoter should contribute high amount if not he doesn't have any interest in the project and it will be the bank's project when it goes bad later and the profitability cash flow estimates should do conservative when you do conservative cash flows and and it should have adequate repayment capacity of the loan that is the loans uh, capital that is installment plus the interest <clears throat> now project appraisal there are several uh, things this i will skip i think 730 kaushal what shall we do because this are what the bankers do i think i'll go to the corporate finance thing and we'll explain to you so when we appraise a project by banks we look at the project promoters these qualities right and project promoter is very important can be a project is not so good but if the project promoter is good the project will be successful but even the project is very good and the project promoter is 
not good, project will be a failure. So project promoter is very key. Then the management, we had to look at the management and management appraisal. <clears throat> this is my project finance lectures. Then market. Market is very important item. Without the market, you cannot have the project. So the project starts with the market. If there's a need for a product, then we have to start the project. So the demand and market analysis is very important. Sometimes other, these people who come with the project proposals, they say in the first year, they can have, they will get about 50% market penetration. So that shows that their lack of knowledge in a, a new product is coming, it will take years to get into market penetration. Then some hotels, they come and say, first year our occupancy is 75-80%. So it cannot happen, maybe 25-30% to 30 in the first year until the hotel is known and is, uh, they, they are, uh, people get to know about the hotel. Okay? <clears throat> Then based on the market appraisal, we can get the sales forecast right? and the pricing strategy and the sales revenue. This is the total revenue we can get annually projected this much of sales revenue. Then the, we have to appraise the capital cost. I said earlier, the cost of the project, uh, the bankers have to check whether the cost of the project is correct. If the if we have uh, underestimate the project, then, uh, you know, yeah, if we think the project cost underestimated, then there will not be enough money to complete the project because we have underestimated the project. So we had to look at profitability estimates. Now sources of finance is how we are going to finance the project with how much of debt, how much of equity, what are the institutions we are going to put in? Uh, are we going to, the bank is going to do on their own or uh, join with another bank or go for a syndication? Then the technical appraisal is very important. The selection of machinery, uh, technical arrangements and the procurement and the plant layout. <clears throat> Still the technical appraisal, that is the location of the land. These are very important aspects. Maybe the land can be located close to the market or close to the raw materials. Right? <clears throat> and the availability of labor, the availability of utilities and the flood disposal systems, the transport arrangements, community infrastructure. Then the financial appraisal, which uh, we teach the net present value. If the net present value is positive, that is net present value is future cash flows, we discount to the present and deduct the total investment, then we get the net present value. And the net present value should be positive. It, net present value can be positive due to our estimation errors, right? So we have to uh, check our estimation errors as well. The internal rate of return is, when the net present value is zero, what is the rate? Right? So it can be 15%, 20%. So if it is more than our required rate, the, the company's required rate of return, then they will invest. The profitability index is also part of net present value. Then the ratio analysis, uh, the debt to equity ratio, current ratio is current taxes divided by current liabilities. And the break even point, how much you have to sell to break even. There are three break evens. Cash break even is the lowest, then the accounting break even, and then the uh, financial break even. <clears throat> then the, this, these were not there when I was doing project finance, ESG criteria. ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. So it refers to three key factors when measuring sustainability, and ethical impact of an investment in a business com company, business or company. <clears throat> so most socially responsible investors, now finance institutions have 
separate officers to evaluate ESG, uh, check companies out using ESG criteria to screen investments in projects. So environmental factors, all of you know, the uh, carbon emissions, water air pollution, climate change, waste management, raw material sourcing, and deforestation. Social factors is how you treat your employees, customers, communities, and the diversity, the, the gender di diversity, right? equity and inclusion, labor management, and the data privacy, and security and community relations. Now data is, sometimes the data is not kept properly and lost and so many customers now in Australia, the telecom company also had this problem. Gone governance factors consider the, the, how organization is managed, right? Whether incentives are aligned with stakeholder expectations, people are given correct uh, uh, remuneration based on their performance. Uh, shareholder rights are viewed and honored. There's minority shareholders sometimes doesn't get any, their, their voice is not represented in the boards because they are minority, right? And right type of internal controls exist to promote transparency and accountability on the part of leadership. So ESG is very important factor uh, in the evaluation. <clears throat> Now, some aspects of corporate finance. Uh, corporate finance, you have to answer three questions. Right? Three questions are, what long-term investment should you take on? That is, now in a company, the shareholders are not managing the company. It's the CEO, finance manager has to answer these questions. That is, what lines of business will you be in? and what sorts of buildings, machinery, and equipment will you need, right? So when you decide on what long-term investment should you take on, it depends uh, the, on what line of business you are in. And because of that, it depends on buildings, machinery, and equipment. And to do this business, where will you get the long-term financing to pay for this investment? Are you, will you bring the owners or will you borrow the money? Right, so 100% owners finance, or are you going to have uh, owners and borrowing the money? And then when the organization is running, how will you manage your everyday financial activities, such as collecting from customers and paying supplies? This is called working capital. <clears throat> the first question is firms long-term investments. The process of planning and managing firms' long-term investment is called capital budgeting. Okay, the first question is capital budgeting. Identify investment opportunities that are worth more to the firm than the cost to acquire. That is what we were doing in project finance. Yeah, in project is also you have to look at investment which are worth more to the firm than the cost to acquire. That's why we do net percent value calculations. Then uh, under the same uh, question one, the value of the cash flow generated by an asset exceeds the cost of the assets. So value of the cash flows generated by, we say, cement factory is exceeds the cost of the uh, holding, cost of constructing the cement factory. Must be concerned with not only how much cash they expect to receive. Now we have to, we can re receive cash maybe after 20 years, but that may not be worth. So we have to see uh, when we expect to receive and how likely we will receive it, right? There is there are risk of not receiving it. So how much and when we are going to receive it and how likely we receive it. So evaluating the size, timing, and risk of future cash flows is the essence of capital budgeting. So what we do in project finance also, same. Then the capital structure. The second question is how the firm obtains and manages the long-term financing it needs to support long-term investments. Right? A firm's capital structure, it's called finance structure, refer to the mix of long-term debt and equity, that is shareholding of the firm uses to finance operations. 
So the company has two concerns. How much should we borrow, right? That is what mix of debt and equity is the best. So we, you chose a mix. It will affect both the risk and value of the firm. Now, if the when you have higher borrowings, this has a higher risk. What are the least expensive sources of funds for the firm? So you have to borrow, but from the least expensive sources. So firms have a great flexibility in choosing the financial structure. They can do 100% equity or 80% equity, 20% debt, or 50% equity, 50% debt. So that is company can decide on their financial structure of the capital structure. It is the heart of the capital structure issue. Then the working capital management. This third question, I, as I mentioned, it is working capital. Now you complete the factory, you have to run it. So working capital refers to firm short-term assets. That is, you have stocks and short-term liabilities such as the, the creditors. Okay, So those are, uh, you have to manage. Managing the firm's working capital is a day-to-day -day activity. And if you don't manage it properly, the company may not operate uh, uh, operate in a continuous manner <clears throat> without any interruptions. So working capital management involves how much cash and inventory should we keep on hand? Should we sell on credit? If so, what terms will we offer and who we will extend them? So they don't give credit to everyone. So whom shall we give credit? How will we obtain a needed short-term finance? If we need short-term financing, are we going to get from the banks? Or we get uh, <clears throat> we can borrow short-term and pay cash. If we borrow short-term, how and where should we do it? Or we can get credit from the suppliers of raw material. Right. We are done. Now question time. Back to Mahesh. Oh. Okay, uh, Engineer Piyal, thank you. Uh, hope you all hear me properly. Yes, can you? Yeah. Yes, Mahesh, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I'm Mahesh Udyanga from Building Service Engineering Section and Committee. I'm working as uh, Assistant Secretary in the committee. So, uh, now we are going to start the Q&A session. Uh, our first question, actually, there are two questions, similar questions uh, directed by two gentlemen. Uh, I will direct uh, both questions. Uh, first question is uh, directed by Mr. Hudson De Silva. Uh, is the nuclear power plant project environmentally feasible? Uh, second question is uh, directed by Mr. D. N. Yoganand. Uh, should be a project environmentally, en environmentally feasible? Not so should be a project environmentally feasible not so yeah first one nuclear power plant what was the question again uh, mahesh uh, okay sir uh, is the nuclear power plant project environmentally feasible yes, yeah that sir. i can't uh, answer that has to be conducted environmental analysis i was just giving that as an example of uh, for to uh, show you about projects right so there are in my 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 monitor university group, uh, Dr. Tilak Sembala PTOS, we have been discussing this in our email group. And uh, that we have to look at it uh, because there are uh, nuclear power plants in South India, in uh, Chennai, closer to Sri Lanka, right? So we, we don't know. They, they do, those also can have accidents like Chernobyl or Japanese power plant, and we can have massive disaster. Right? So the, the main concern is having, we are a small country, a nuclear power plant, and if it, uh, there's an accident, the, the country will be over, actually. Country will be over, we won't be able to uh, recover. So those things have to be evaluated by the several authorities and Make a decision. So I, I haven't done any evaluation of nuclear power plant. It is to be done by the, uh, the authorities. <laughs> then the second question was: uh, uh, Should be a project environmentally feasible? Uh, 
not so. Yes, yes, that I mentioned, no? that environment, ESG criteria also. The environment, without environmental approval, we can't, we won't finance a project. In the bank, we'll ask first for the environmental approval, one of the approvals. And not only the approval, and the company has to work according to the approval uh, to do the project. So environment approval is a, a con condition which is uh, needed to finance the project, basically. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, our next question is directed by engineer Janaka Don. Question is, uh, LD can claim both parties as per agreement, agreement terms, but in case further inquiry, such as arbitra arbitration or court case level, any change to decision goes to client side, LD claim issue. Please comment on this, sir. Yeah, actually, this is uh, related to construction contracts. No? Now, in, uh, in a project, construction is only part of the project, okay? I am not a specialist in the construction industry. Now, uh, construct, now you say someone doing a uh, power plant, right? Then the power plant construction contract is, is not a project actually. Contractor is not doing a project. Maybe for the contractors, organization, if you say Sunken, for that uh, that project, uh, that contract is a project for them, but we are looking at the overall project is a contract, right? So uh, LD is, uh, uh, what is that it stands for? The LD is, uh, the, can you say my, so. Okay, uh, okay sir, I will, uh, I will. Yeah, that is not related to the project finance, it is, uh, part to be held in a construction contract. Okay. Okay, sir. So then uh, I will move on to next question. No, sir. Uh, our uh, third question directed by engineer Darnagama. Uh, he has con con uh, congratulated to you, sir, for the excellent mm -hmm. presentation. And uh, he has directed uh, two questions. So I will direct the uh, first question uh, firstly. Uh, the question is, can you kindly explain the viewpoint of the project financier on the aspect of sustainability of a pro project proposal, uh, particularly the triple core value of sustainability? Yeah, that is one question, no? Sustainability of the project. Uh, there, are, uh, there are other questions. Uh, okay, there okay. is uh, another question. So, uh, it's okay. First, I'll uh, explain the answer to the first question. Thank you, Engineer Darnagama. Thank you very much. I saw you have joined the uh, program before the start. And uh, this, uh, <clears throat> again, can you repeat the question? Okay, sir. Yeah. Can you kindly explain the viewpoint of the project financier on the aspect of sustainability of project proposal, yeah. uh, particularly the triple core value of sustainability? Yeah, actually, the project financier have to look at the sustainability. Now, ESG is that uh, sustainability of the project. That is why uh, environment, social, and uh, what is the last one? Uh, the uh, governance, right? Those are sustainable factors because project has to be sustainable. If not, because the projects are not short term, projects are long term, right? So if the project is not sustainable and it should uh, should uh, not affect the environment adversely and it should uh, socially acceptable, socially and the, the governance where the, the, that project company should be uh, transparent. So all these things, uh, the project financier should look into when financing a project. Thanks, uh, Dharnagama, for the question. His next question is, how do you assess the high risk involved in environment of high inflation, like the current economic status in the country, especially yeah. where the LKR is rapidly uh, devalued against major foreign currencies? Yes, and now that is a big uh, issue in project finance. You now I mentioned, remember, that uh, energy project, which uh, went, uh, took the loan, at AWPLR, which was maybe 8% at that time, 
went up to over 30 percent right so it has to pay 30 percent at that time now my must come down the banks are asked to reduce the interest rates uh, saying that uh, inflation has come down inflation has come down 12 percent compared to last year june okay from last year june to this year june the annual inflation if you take from this uh, uh, Colombo Consumer Price Index was set up uh, in 2021 January. Now it was 100 at that time, now 192 or something. Then 90% inflation over the uh, 30 months, right? And the, the governor also says there is no inflation, but we, we feel inflation, right? In the projects, now project costing is very important. Now the what would have happened a project which was approved before December or February last year. And that project cost, you never expected that this maybe cement prices will go up like this, other imported items, and some items are not available. So the project financier, uh, you can't help, the project might go bad. Now you can see in the newspapers, so many parate action taken by the banks, Maybe due to bad operations of those organizations, or because of the situation in the country. Now, the Sri Lanka situation is really uh, uh, not normal interest rates. The treasury bills are the highest rate. Normally, the treasury bills should be the lowest rate, and the bank rate should be more than that, and then the other finance manager, finance company rate should be higher because the treasury bills are called uh, risk-free investment and we should bring that down. We have to bring the treasury bill down and treasury bill, uh, the banks have to pay more than treasury bill because the banks, what they are doing now, they take your deposits and invest in treasury bills, right? There's an article I was reading. So the banks, what is the bank's role? You have to take deposits and invest, give loans to the, uh, the public to do projects or projects or any other uh, operations. But what banks have been doing last year, that's why banks are making profits. You know, the banks take maybe about 10 or 15 percent and uh, uh, invest in treasury bills or bonds for 25, 30 percent. Right? So that is the banks are doing something wrong and the banks should be told to do what they have been uh, established for taking deposits and give loans because we, we are a bank is an intermediary. Take deposits, take uh, give loans. But the, what they do is take deposits and give loans to the government and uh, not to the private sector. Hope uh, Engineer Zatagamai uh, answered your question. I think you can ask them to even uh, unmute and ask questions. Okay. Uh, after the uh, all the question directly okay. uh, then we will give them the chance to ask so uh, right. our next uh, question present uh, name is pro not mentioned properly so the question is what are the methods or tools to assess the risk involved in a project yeah that i think is very difficult to explain now there is some uh, risk evaluation criteria uh, called uh, uh, there's uh, we call risk replace plus beta into risk premium right uh, normally risk we can we can just now when we were doing uh, hydropower right the banks didn't have risk risk department now every bank has a risk department any loan application after someone the loan department do it go to the risk department and with their comments recommendation only go to the approval authority board or managing director or the credit committee right at that time 97 98 from maybe up to 2003 we didn't have risk department in a bank and the risk we took by giving loans to hydropower was enormous i i i now fear what we did because the risk what are the risk now you, you take the risk of these developers who have never done hydropower projects. Okay, so that is one risk. Then the second risk, you are taking as mortgage the the uh, via the channel 
the four-way tank, the pen stock, and the powerhouse and the machine. If project fail, can we recover our money by selling those? Okay. We can't remove the uh, channel and the via and all these things. So the, 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 we took a lot of risk because we were keen to uh, fin finance these projects for the, the development of renewable energy. And those risks cannot be taken now. Right? So those are, we, we, we somehow say that the risk of the project promoter, we have to look at the risk of the management, risk of the project. They are a high risk project, low risk project. Okay. Now, if you take a hydropower project, it's a high risk project. If you don't have water uh, in the channel, in the, because we are using past statistics and get the, uh, the hydrology study, and uh, there can be due to this environmental effects. El Nino effects, there won't be voting, and they, then we don't get uh, payment, right? We didn't uh, take CEB risk at that time because we thought CEB will pay, and at, at that time they paid. Now there is a CEB risk. So we had to look at the, all those risk factors, and I, it's difficult to explain at, at, uh, now all these areas. Thank you for the question, but that's a very good uh, question. Thank you, sir. Our next question is directed by uh, Mr. Lennart. Uh, the question is, are there foreign funding agencies who are funding for pharmaceutical manufacturing project in Sri Lanka? Uh, I don't know about foreign pharmaceutical uh, agencies, but the banks, when I was at Ceylon Bank, we financed a pharmaceutical manufacturing project in uh, Horana, right? I don't know whether it is in operation or not, but uh, it was under construction when I left the bank, uh, uh, right? And uh, you you have to get investors, but I told the investors um, may not come in this environment. Now there are investors, few investors have come, like for this uh, Indian investor in the wind power, because they have been given uh, separate treatment by the government. So now actually if you like, India, India like taking over a country, even Indian Foreign Secretary was here, I think uh, yesterday or day before. And uh, uh, so Indian pharmaceutical companies might be interested. We have to look for them, right? If there is a project, you can have a joint venture with the Indian pharmaceutical company. I know a big casino operator has started the pharmaceutical project and the pharmaceutical industry is very good because uh, we are importing so much of pharmaceuticals. If we can have our local uh, industry, I think Pallikele, there are several pharmaceutical companies uh, in operation, then we can reduce our foreign exchange. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, our next question is directed by engineer Kaushal Patirana. The question is, what is the guarantee that a foreign entity bank gives to a local bank when they are ready to finance a project which is done by a foreign client, example, Lanka Hospital, uh, Apollo. Yeah. Actually, foreign bank uh, didn't give a loan uh, uh, for that. Uh, that Actually, the IFC Kaushal gave this guarantee because they wanted, I think, to help the country to have their hospital network. There was another Singapore company looking at uh, project in Maradan at that time, but they put up the foundation also, but it never uh, saw the light of the day, right? And, uh, but uh, we we have financed uh, uh, companies in Maldives, the Sri Lankan banks, all the resorts in Maldives, as a foreign uh, bank. We have, I think Sri Lankan banks, now commercial bank is in Bangladesh, uh, subsidiary, and the banks have financed projects in Bangladesh also with the venture capital company. And uh, the, the, if the project is good, uh, I don't know whether any Sri Lankan projects financed by foreign banks because the Sri Lankan banks have been financing projects. That's what I have been telling because now I am the country coordinator for uh, PFAN, this private financing network, which wants to help, it's, it's in the developing countries we have in Asia, South Asia, India, 
Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Bangladesh. And then uh, we have you know, at, uh, Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, America as well, right? And what Sri Lanka, we have not done any of the PFAN project investment in Sri Lanka. But I have to, told this PFAN, my UNIDO people, is the Sri Lankan banks, if this is a good project, they will finance, right? And they have been doing it. So you don't need to go to uh, foreign financing. And uh, that's why this PFAN system has not worked in Sri Lanka. But there was a potential after this uh, uh, economic uh, turmoil, because the Sri Lankan banks are not financing, but you cannot get foreign entities to come and finance also because the Sri Lankan situation. Hope I answered you correctly. Thank you, sir. Our next question was directed by engineer Bandula. The question is around 52% GDP contributed by SME sector. How this sector develop within next five years time? Can you repeat? Okay, sir. Uh, around 52% GDP contribute by SME sector. Yes. How this sector develop within next five years time? Oh, I can't say for the future, next five years. And I know the past and uh, the, there are credit lines, I think from ADB or World Bank, SME 1, SME 2, SME 3, like when I joined the Head National Bank and SME sector, had a lot of financing, uh, the low cost financing, uh, 1990s and early 2000s, until we became a, uh, what is this, medium level developed country. After that, we didn't get, we cannot absorb the uh, low cost funds. Right? So the SME sector, I think is uh, hit by the present crisis very badly, but the SME sector is the uh, life of lifeblood of the industry in Sri Lanka, because as you said, 52%. And uh, depending on how we recover, the kind of SME sector will recover if their, uh, the cost of their uh, financing is low, they have raw material availability. Now, when you stop importing, uh, then you stop some importing of raw material needed for the, uh, the uh, SME sector. So if the country gets uh, normalized, and the country has a growth potential, then the SME sector will be part of the major part of the growth of the country. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, our next question was directed by Hasinta Danapala, Mr. Hasinta Danapala. Uh, the question is In Middle East, we are using RIBA plan published in 2018 and NRM 14 project finance evaluation published in 2012. What are the guidelines used in Sri Lanka? Why can't Sri Lanka use latest pub publications in the world? Mm, I think if you can share those publications, I can share with banks and see whether they, they can, because I'm teaching project finance, it will be useful for me as well. Uh, if you can share, I will share my email address. Um. Sorry. PL. Four five one three at sorry at gmail dot com. If anyone wants to uh, contact me on WhatsApp, zero triple seven five six two zero one four. Okay. So, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mahesh? His name, sir. His name, sir. Uh, Hasint, Mr. Hasinth Danapal. Hasinth, please uh, contact me on email. 
think uh, we can hear the Sarabha. industry in Sri Lanka. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, our next question was directed by uh, Mr. Supun. Uh, what would be the typical uh, typical debate and uh, equity ratios institutes looking at for different uh, segments? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the debt equity ratio now for infrastructure projects like the power projects, we even have gone up to 80% debt, 20% equity. You can go 75, 25. But for like hotel projects or something, we have uh, 60, 40. 60% debt, 40% equity. Depending on the risk, we can go in 50-50 also. We can't say like the, I can say clearly that if it is, a, if the risk of the industry is high, then the equity has to be high and the loan has to be low, right? For so depending on the industry, but for the infrastructure projects, the, because these are big and you can't find so much of equity, and that uh, there's an off uh, take agreement. We know how much you will get uh, after you sell the electricity uh, to the authority. Then, based on that, uh, we can increase the debt. Right. right thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's all the questions. Uh, and also, Engineer Darnagama, thanks to you in the chat box. Yeah, I, I saw that. He, uh, I saw. <laughs> I think he's satisfied with your answer yeah, no. so his wife is the... my batchmate actually ah, my right. batchmate. <laughs> okay so uh, based on the time uh, we don't have time for the yeah. right hand question actually yeah yeah so... i think eight seven no right <laughs> yeah yeah so uh so uh now we came into the latter part of the program before that uh i would like to thanks for the engineer fial for wonderful presentation and wonderful session so uh, now came into the latter part of the program and uh, I will invite to engineer Lakmini to deliver the word of thank and conclude the session. Thank you very much, sir. You are welcome. Welcome for engineer Lakmini. Thank you, engineer Mahesh and engineer Priyal. Uh, I hope I'm edible, uh, audible, sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> edible. <laughs> sorry, audible. <laughs> Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lakmini Abhisarya. I'm hungry, actually, Lakmini. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, as we conclude today's pre uh, proceedings, it's time to show our appreciation to those who helped to make this event a success. First and foremost, I would like to thank our resource person today, Engineer Pial Hennaika, for accepting our invitation and sparing us time of his busy schedule and enlightening the audience today on project finance and basic corporate financial skills. It was indeed an interesting and informative lecture and I hope you all enjoyed today's lecture. Now, I take this opportunity to present the virtual token of appreciation to engineer Pial Hennaika. Thank you, thank you. Engineer Pial, please accept this virtual token. Okay. Uh, we are very Accepted. grateful about your contribution to this webinar. Next, I would like to thank uh, the everyone in Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee who supported in organizing this event. And further, I would like to thank the ISL technical staff Without their support, this event would not be possible. Last but not least, um, I thank all of you for participating for today's webinar. Uh, we, we are looking forward to see you all in coming upcoming webinars. I wish you a pleasant evening. Good night. Thank you. Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night, Lakmini. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm happy to share my knowledge. Uh, with everyone, but I know I should share with uh, everyone. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank okay. you, Jennifer.